Nothing in the Phantom Menace makes any sense at all. It comes off like a script written by an 8 year old. It's like George Lucas finished the script in one draft, like he turned it in and they decided to go with it without anyone saying that it made no sense at all or was a stupid, incoherent mess. From the very start of this movie I could tell something was really wrong, just by the way it started. It opens with some boring pilot asking for permission to land on a ship that looks like a half-eaten donut with a donut hole in the middle. What the fuck is that? Then two cloaked figures walk into a room in a completely flat angle. They sit down in a conference room, drink tea, and wait to talk about a trade dispute with something that looks like my ex-wife. While they eventually do get to the ball-numbing, mindless action that the fanboys crave, I found myself utterly bored already. Compare this fecal matter to the opening of the original Star Wars. You see, a guy named William Shakespeare once said, Brevity is the soul of wit. This just means don't waste my time. You keep it nice and simple. I said stop wasting my time. Stop it! Without saying one word of awkward, boring, political dialogue that goes on for ten minutes, we know everything we need to know just by the visuals. Rebels. Empire. We get a sense of how small and ill-equipped the Rebels are and how large and powerful the Empire is. The low angle implies dominance. And the length of the Star Destroyer implies the long reach of the Empire. This shot says everything we need to know without saying one word. So this comparison of openings is a small example of the overall styles of both films. The original trilogy was a modern day homage to the classic adventure serials of the past. The kind I used to watch when I was in my 40s. Good vs. Evil. The classic hero on a journey. The adventurous rogue. A damsel in distress. The wise old sage, gay robots, and an epic quest of discovery. The new movies are about shoving as much crap into each shot as possible. See, it's so dense, every single image has so many things going on. You see, we need a deeper meaning to things. Without it, none of it really matters, does it? Special effects are just a tool, a means of telling a story. People have a tendency to confuse them as an end to themselves. Uh, a special effect without a story is a pretty boring thing. You said it, brother. Wait, you said that? Finally we get to the Phantom Menace. Gungans fight the droid army. Queen Amidaman storms the palace to get the Viceroy. Anakin and Naboo pilots attack the droid control ship. And Jedi's lightsaber fight in the Theed power room. Shiny that for. This was one of the major mistakes made in episode one. Ironically, the simplest endings, the first two movies, with the least locations and events are vastly more interesting because the plot is built up to them and we can focus on the one thing. After the rough cut screening of the movie for the first time, everyone in attendance looks just as baffled at the clusterfuck as we were. George admits to throwing too much out there. I may have gone too far in a few places. Um, yeah? The editor then attempts to explain pacing and why four scenes with totally different emotional tones don't work well together. In a space of about 90 seconds, you know, you go from lamenting the death of, you know, a hero to escape to slightly comedic with Jar Jar, you know, to mm -hmm. Anakin returning with his... But he kind of realizes he's wasting his time, so he stops. Never again will anything be more wildly anticipated or a bigger disappointment. So who dropped the ball? Well, I guess you could say it was everyone involved in the production. Mainly the producers and those higher up on the food chain. Sure, it's easy to blame George for the script and doing everything wrong, but those people who didn't challenge Lucas on some of the questionable ideas, they also carry some blame. To quote Gary Kurtz, You can really see this in the behind the scenes videos. People look scared around George. They laugh at his bad jokes. You're listening to the music. <laughs> when he comes into a room, there's like silence and fear and terror. Every so often, you'll catch some looks of confusion and mistrust. You gotta wonder what some of these people were thinking. 
Now again, I must stress, I wasn't there and I can't pretend to know all the goings on behind the scenes, but it all seems pretty obvious if you think about it. Lucas has always been a rogue filmmaker who hated the studio system. He always seemed to want total control in his projects, which I can understand. And while a director should have control on the project, filmmaking should also be a collaborative process. The second screenwriter can help focus the story and the dialogue. Actors are creative people too. They can provide valuable insight on the characters and a lot of really good ideas. I love you. I know. And a good executive producer can be the voice of reason when things start to get out of hand. I think all this can be summed up with the expression, art from adversity. The original Star Wars was plagued with problems. Nothing worked right, things were rushed I guess, but it ended up being a great movie. Now you can see why people hate these fucking movies. Cause the people in them act like weird space aliens and not people. Now technically they are weird space aliens. But we can't relate to their fucking weird, sterile, sexless universe. They seem as cold and lifeless and boring as the computer-generated world they're projected against. Simple, real, genuine moments like this have been replaced by this. Ah. Much like how Jar Jar was there to appeal to the really little kids, Anakin was there to appeal to younger, toy-playing, aged boys, the Jedi action stuff was to appeal to the teenage to middle-aged fanboys. And lastly, why do you think Amidala changed her outfit so many times and wore such elaborate costumes? Well, that was an attempt to give little girls and women something of interest to look at. The main point I'm trying to make is you can make a film that appeals to all audiences, but you gotta keep all the elements pretty subdued in order to make it work. When you include the extreme ends of the spectrum that movies could go to in order to sell your movie to everyone possible, from like baby stuff to extreme hardcore violence, it becomes a big fucking disaster. If you compare Empire with Clones in this way, you can see a vast difference from the realism of actual locations and sets to the phony, plastic, cartoony, unrealistic environments. From a real Yoda who was there to teach us things about the Force, to a fake looking computer Yoda who was there to do video game shit, and most importantly a love story that felt like real people that we grew to care about, struggling in a tough situation, but rather characters we are told we should like, with no more depth than a cardboard cutout projected against a fake background. For my ally is the Force. <laughs> And the powerful ally it is. Life creates it. I need a midichlorian count. Makes it grow. The reading's off the chart. Its energy surrounds us. Over 20,000. And binds us. Even Master Yoda doesn't have a midichlorian count that high. Luminous beings are we, not this crude matter. This weapon is your life. You must feel the force around you. Yes. With the new digital technology and everything, I'm pretty much whatever I can imagine I can do. We have clones and droids and flying termites and rockets taking off, flying gunships, ground troops, 200 Jedi. There's some really good action in this movie. Uh, people are getting wiped out, man. There's some wipeouts in this movie. <laughs> and then they get trapped into this droid factory. We see Jedi in large battle scenes, you know, battling as a large group. And before, we've never seen that before. There's always been a couple of Jedi fighting each other. These are the real flaws of the prequels, not the tiny nitpicking about things, but the major problems. Every single frame, every single shot in the movie has a digital effect. Pretty much every set has blue screen even if it's just out a window or something it's everywhere uh i think i've been on one set where there hasn't been any blue screen the, the guy who's creating that character will create their responses off what how you respond to their responses that aren't there it's a nightmare <laughs> when you suck out the humanity from the films and replace it with the ease of digital filmmaking 
Well, it just sucks. Do my, do my, do my